and Ali Watkins were going to be missing. Is that a bit of a boost? Look, Tony, when you see the England squad and the players, that the 26 that were picked, obviously there was potential to do before and the lads, maybe little illnesses and little niggles or whatever, so they left, them, they left themselves a bit of space in terms of the numbers they picked up. Um, they still have some good options to pick from, I think, so they'll, uh, they'll be OK, but we'll be full focus on ourselves. And look, at, obviously it brings into the play maybe some of the younger players that they picked in the squad in terms of options that they brought up, so it'll be interesting to see. When you look at the England players who've got a lot of experience now, Declan Rice in particular, uh, Jack Grealish back in the squad as well, do you ever imagine what it would have been like uh, with Rice in particular if he had stayed with Ireland after those three matches? No, not at all, because look, it, it's not, it's, it's one of them, it's a, focus on, it's a focus on us, the players that are here, the players that want to be here. It's as simple as that. But you saw how good a player he was up close, didn't you? Well, yeah, he's not here. He's in England squad, Tony, so I can't keep talking about it. No, but you do have to, I suppose, plan to curb his um, in impact on the game. You have to curb a lot of England players' impact on the game. It's when you play a team that have just been in a Euros final. You know they have lots of threats. They have lots of options to pick from. And I think you know that whatever 11 that they pick, and the squad of players that they have to bring on and change games as well. That's going to be full focus on our point of view of what we can do to stop them, but more importantly, what we can do to cause them problems. Um, what about Lee Carsley and, and his <coughs> situation now? He's interim as you were yourself recently. Um, do you think he's got a good chance of getting the England gig full time? I'm sure he's hoping so. Um, he'd be thinking that he's jumped up from the 21s after being. Um, successful on the 21s manager, winning the Euros with them. So uh, I'm sure that maybe the people behind the scenes would like to see him continue that kind of role into the senior one. And obviously they've given that chance, but I'm sure there'll be a cry out for other names as well from the public in England as well. But as far as we're concerned, it's nothing, nothing for us to worry about. Our focus is on the start of the Nations League qualifiers. The manager coming in, hey man that we give him our full back in, our full support, and hopefully we get off to a good start. <coughs> Can I just ask you about Seamus Coleman and Andrew Omovanadelli, who didn't get involved yesterday. Are they closer to being involved yeah, in their everyone, today? Everyone, everyone good to train today, full, full, full fit squad ready to train. Thank you. John Harlings, just to follow up what Tony said there, but Lee, have you heard from him in recent months, obviously a forward team out of yours? Have you spoken to him? No, no, I haven't spoken to him recently. Um, a few times going with different games and seeing them over the years at different stages. Um, he was my A license when I was doing the A license. He came, he came in and spoke on it as well. And uh, I look at, as a teammate and as a person, any time I see him, I'd always get on, get on well with Lee. And um, Carzo, as he, he's known as, but look, it's one of them. It's a different scenario. I haven't seen him recently, but. Um, Get a chance to catch up with him at some stage on Saturday. I'm sure. Just in speaking of that man as well, obviously it's Hamer's first week. He said last week in the squad he was kind of just your steer in many ways in the squad. What's what's the balance be like this week? Are you kind of helping him as regards getting to know some of the players, or is he very much doing things his way? No, it's a, yeah. Look, as he as he mentioned, it's a case of everyone supporting each other. Um, and Paddy's influence as well um, is always important too. So we we'll bring that combination together. And ultimately, Hamer is the manager. So I mean, we're here to do everything we can to help him. Just on the fixture, you played in the last England Ireland game at the Aviva, the little draw. Of course, you, you played at Wembley as well with Shane Long's goal. What is this fixture like, and what would it mean for Ireland to get a positive result from Saturday? Yeah, look, I think you'll know from the fans and the player, everyone will know, the manager will know, and he got, obviously, you know, we're coming in in the bus in the stadium. The game sold out, the atmosphere around it, the history all around the game. So you bring all those factors together, you know it's a brilliant game to be involved in. Every player in the squad will want to play. Um, and you want a positive outcome from it, but ultimately, you know, it's a great test of uh, where we're going and where we hopefully want to get to. And Will, just from a player's point of view, just how special a picture is this? Yeah, no, it's a massive game. It's one that since the draw came out, everyone's looking forward to the game. and. I think it's a real good opportunity for us to put ourselves up against you know, a team that was in the Euro final not so long ago. And 
to cut ourselves off against them and see where we're at will be a good test on Saturday. Thank you. John, you've obviously got to know him over the last few weeks off the pitch, but now seeing him over the last couple of days on the training ground, can you talk about how he works and um, what, you, what you've made of him? No, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been good. Most importantly, it's been good for the players to, to see um, what, what he's about. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, getting to know him the last few weeks, uh, being here in Abbottstown, uh, going out to games, and you're just talking about ideas and what I think in terms of the most important thing for me is I know he's a very good manager, he's a very good coach. Um, the details he gives the players, I think it's more of a question. I think I know what I'm seeing, what his information he's given, but the players will obviously will be the, the most important in that sense. Um, but no, as I've said, the clarity is there for everyone. I think that's the most important thing. And in terms of your role then, compared to say when you were in with Stephen Kenny uh, over the last couple of days on the training pitch, is it, is it different in any way? Have you, have you more influence with, with him or just coming in? Yeah, look, look as I said, uh, when I came in on Stephen, it was Stephen and Keith, if you know what I mean. You now, obviously, I'm, I'm there as uh, him as assistant or number two, whatever way you want to you say it. And then obviously, Paddy's in as well, so there's, there's brilliant knowledge, there's good information getting through to the players and it's just bringing that all together then for, for the game on Saturday. And well for you having had a bit of a run now in, in the Premier League, does it feel like you're even going into this camp in a, in a different way? I don't know if you get into double figures for caps, but in terms of the experience you now I have for handling a, an occasion like this? Yeah, no, sure. I think I've played in a few big games now in my short career and the last few games in the Premier League have been you know, an eye opener for, for us at the club level, but for myself you know, in terms of the level and Coming into a game like Saturday, it's uh, another big game, another big test, and a nice one that I'm relishing as a player. Ellie, John, how are you doing? Um, just, I suppose, just looking at the squad, as look, uh, I think it was referenced last week, a lot of players are playing 10 minutes at their club, um, and I'm just wondering what, what sort of advantage is that coming into this, this, this uh, high profile game where energy is going to be really vital? Yeah, look, it's it's always important. Um, look, it's something I, I said to the players in, in the June window. I said whatever was going to happen going forward, how important it is for club situations, if they could, to get them resolved as quickly as possible, to get playing as quickly as you could, because how quickly the games come round with September, October, if you know what I mean. Uh, but September in particular, and the way the transfer window closes just beforehand. Obviously, players may be waiting different things, but I was kind of suggesting as quickly as you could try and get not selfishly from an Irish point of view to get the minutes on the board as, as much as you can because it's just the sharpness, the, the mental sharpness, not only that and the physical aspect that you need to have ready to go to be able to win matches at this level. And just in terms of players coming into the, into the camp this week with the seven class, must be coming in, buzzing, the likes of Chio and Sammy Smollett's getting new clubs. Yeah. Is there a sort of, are they bringing positivity from the clubs into this camp? Not that means it, but is that what really help? Yeah, I look, I think it's always, the case. it definitely helps when you have um, players in form, players um, playing at, at the level <coughs> you mentioned. But I think the most important thing is <coughs> you'll always have a different situation in a squad aspect at international level that. Um, good moments, bad moments for individuals, but I think the manager's message, and Will will probably back me up on that, is in the sense of forgetting about your club in the sense that you come in here and we, we focus on what we're doing. You'll we have different ideas at clubs, different um, principles, different philosophies for attacking, defending, etc. We're going to keep it as simple and as clear as possible to get us the most effective results as quick as we can. Thank you everyone, we're moving to the embargo section now, so everything past this point is 11pm tonight. We'll start with Gavin and then Paul and then John. <coughs> John, how, how are you? <coughs> Did you look at the Slovenia-England match in Cologne? It seemed like a, a potential blue for how Ireland get a result with the nil all. Is that something that you actually kind of look at? Is something you can dig into and go, that's how we get a result against this in Yeah, look, you look into, you, you, obviously you, it's a scenario of Lee's brought in some different players in terms of from the 21s and then it's a blend of what you have to remember that's under a different manager how, they go about it, how their approach would be I know you're talking about how 
the other team approached it. But yeah, there is ideas, of course you're going to take from the recent games, because obviously the majority of players will still be, still be involved when you talk about the older, more experienced ones in the squad. Um, but it's a case of getting a balance right of blending what pictures you might see from characteristics from Leeds on the 21s, ideas, and mixing that with the seniors, try and get the balance right of what you portray to the players. Yeah, you actually touched on that. Right. England, because he's 21, that summer's probably as good as Barana, or what they're going to do. Yeah, well, look, it, it just comes down to what, how much Lee can get into the players as quickly in that first week, or what, how much he wants to um, change from the, uh, the imprint that Garrett had obviously left on the team as well. So it's getting that balance right for us. Yeah, you focus on what, as always, what your opposition, the strengths, and weaknesses are, and then you make a plan on the back of that. Paul? John, how are you? Um, I think yourself or him have said at the squad announcement about Evan Ferguson being a better handle on maybe three or four training sessions in in terms of fitness. And if he's ready for, for Saturday, how's he, how's he doing? And, and is he ready? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Evan will be ready for Saturday. Um, <coughs> he's obviously had a couple of sessions with us, and he'll have a full one again today. And uh, no, look, as you mentioned, he's not been back long and he's been out for a few months, but I think he's, uh, he's young enough. He's young enough and he's, uh, he's ready and he's shown he's nice and sharp and training. But look, but we're also realistic to know that we have to uh, remember that he's just back in from a couple of weeks' training. So you get that balance right, but he's been very sharp in training and hopefully that continues over the next couple of days and then we'll make a decision later on in the week. Is there, with that in mind, is there any pressure from Brighton? No. It, when, a, when a player comes to uh, when a player comes to be selected for the national team, they're available for depending on the amount of games. They're available for 180 minutes or zero minutes, depending on what the manager decides. Yeah, just related to that, John. So, there's been. Did you have conversations with Brighton, like they aware or anyone just about? No, it's one of them. There's, there's always conversations going on in the background, whether it be medical teams, etc., different people. Um, but it's one of them. It's always a case of, when a, like I've just mentioned, when a player becomes available and is selected for a team, and you're in control, you're, you have to take care of that player and be responsible for that. I'm just sorry to vote you, you can't be high for there. We've seen a bit of this week. Has anyone seen him get angry yet? <laughs> Well, I haven't seen him gangry yet, no, but a few other. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, he's, uh, he's, a, look, he's a cool, cool character. <coughs> and I'm sure you can, you, you've seen that yourselves, how he goes about things and how he wants to impress his personality on, on the team as well. But also you can tell there's a steeliness there behind it um, and how he wants to get his ideas across. His messages are very clear and you can see the intensity in his voice as well when he's on the training pitch too. That, if a player is not doing the role, he, he, he soon lets them know as well. So, look, you don't you don't uh, qualify for major tournaments and be successful with teams by not having a steadiness about it. Thanks. Justin? Uh, John, I'm Jeff. Uh, in the last uh, sort of 18 months since you came into the season, you've actually earned actually a lot of experience playing against like, like league teams like Netherlands, France, Belgium. Top ten for right? So here's another one. What what can you bring from those games to play against the really top of the top? Um, well, I think the, the most important thing is you know the the level of detail and the planning that's that goes into the games beforehand, and also the kind of breakdown of what you give to the players in terms of uh, assessing team strengths and assessing areas where you hope to exploit. Um, and how important moments are in games that you take chances um, when they when they come about because obviously how crucial the goals are at this level. But also to know that I think the most important thing is for the players' aspect that they've been really present in those games and had an impact in those games that they've had chances in those games and they've had moments where they could have had very different results in those games. So I think you put the blend of all those elements together. And the mo that's the most important thing for me when I was a player, but also now on the other side, to know that you have a real chance in the game. I think that's the most important thing. And I'd always, you'd always feel playing that against anyone at home, you, you have a chance. And you, 
Do you sometimes think you have to nearly convince them that they have a chance in the team? No, not at all, because I think as a professional you're in you're in you're at this level because you've been competitive to how ferocious it is an environment to be successful and to be compared to reach a level of Premier League football or to reach international standards, you know you have to be competitive, you know you have to have that standard, you have to have that winning mentality. Okay. Will just sorry, just one last one. Just with the same sort of question, playing in, against those like the cream of the, the the top international teams, do you find what differences have you found? Differences, I think, you know, being in the game and making sure you're present in the game, as John said, throughout the whole game, I think is important because moments can change very quickly against the top, top players. And I think in each game that we've had that you mentioned now, I think we've had opportunities or we've been in the game until the last minute. So I think from a player's side, it's full belief going into the game that, you know, we'll have moments, we'll have opportunities to hurt them. And at home is a, is a very good chance for us. Philip? <coughs> Thanks, Dan. Do you understand? Taylor, Taylor Harwood Bellis. Okay. Now, you know him. <laughs> the name. Um, he played for a big card in the 21s in England uh, with the European Championships. Have you spoken to him about what, you know, how he's improved his game, what, what Lee has done for him? Yeah, no, I have spoken to him a little bit. Him and obviously Adam <coughs> Alarm have worked with him very closely mm. in England as well as his assistant manager. So I spoke to both of them over the last few weeks and they've obviously only had good things to say about him. They, won a European Championship under him and Taylor was his captain so yeah. he's obviously got a biased view on him and is very positive and says uh, he's improved his game a lot but I think obviously going into the seniors a lot of different uh, ways of playing that you might not use as he did with Taylor Harbour. Yeah. You weren't able to glean any sort of uh, insider secrets? No, 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 he wouldn't give too much away. <coughs> I think uh, you know, he's just saying what a good manager he's been for himself personally and I'm sure he'll give it his best shot to yeah. first him. And just one more. Um, your manager is sticking to his principles of playing a passing game, even though there hasn't been a great start result-wise, he's adamant he's not going to change. Mm. Stephen Kenny you know, was, was pushing a passing game. You're a passing player, you like to go on the ball with his face. And, you know, if Ireland do mix it up a little bit and they change things, be a little bit more direct, are you okay to even fit into that? You make yeah, that change? Yeah, yeah no, for sure. I'll play however <coughs> the manager wants me to play. You know, I'll, whatever he tells me to do, I'll go out there and give my best. Just because I've played in <coughs> passing teams before doesn't mean I'll play in them forever, I think. At Stoke, we weren't necessarily a massive <coughs> passing team, and I think I've done some of my best football there as well. So, no, however the manager wants me to play, then I'll be more than happy to go out and do it. Yeah, are you able to get stuck in and make the old tackles as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, I will, yeah. Aidan, please. Just for Will, uh, Will, you're in the setup a lot of time. I think Morris Hill was your, your debut, you've played a lot of games. I think this will be your first time to play against England at any level. Obviously, you're part of the setup, up but you were born in England. Like, what, what goes through your head when you're facing England on Saturday? Just that I want to win the game, you know, I've been in the Irish setup as you've mentioned for quite a long time and my full focus for growing up has always been to play for Ireland and I take it as another big game, obviously they're a, a good nation that have got to a European final recently but just as anyone I'll be going into the game wanting to win the game and put down a big marker for myself personally and for us as, as a nation to get a big result. Because John and I spoke before the game about taking the emotion out of it but there is, there is history between the two nations. There is, like, is there a little party as well that thinks that this is a little bit different because it is England? Maybe a little bit, yeah, but I think you know any big game it has the same sort of feeling. <coughs> you know, you're going into the game, you're wanting to make sure you get off to a good start, and I think with it being at home, we'll have obviously the full support of the fans, and I think a quick start will be vital for us in the game, and I think kind of treating it as any other game would be important for us as players. Just sorry, just one final one. The club season has been a difficult enough season and mm. off at half time in the last game. Like, what's said to you or what's what's the management saying to you about the season so far? So just the same as what you were saying there, just to stick to our principles, you know, it's only three games, we're only very short time into a long season and you know we've been unfortunate in games but equally we, we know ourselves we probably haven't been at the level myself included. So I think this break's come at a good time for us to, you know, reset and going back in I think you know, we'll stick to our principles and I'm sure we'll get positive results soon. Finally, David. Yeah, John, there's been talk about going back to basics and like, the PMR defence and all this. What does the Shadow War impact to be able to be in the defence there? Um, well, look, it's it's one of those things. I think when you come into uh, Nations League qualifiers, the group stage, then obviously um, a draw or a World Cup, and you, you see what you get, you realise you kind of start calculating what you need, stay in the group. 
can you advance, can you get more FIFA um, <coughs> qualification uh, points etc, you, you, you're bringing all that together and ultimately a huge part of it is being defensively solid as a team, keeping clean sheets, giving yourself every chance you can um, to be to be in the game and then or having that desire to go and punish teams, having that desire to go show your attacking threats as often as you can, to get crosses in the box, to be putting teams under pressure, to have that whole combination together of being a ruthless, efficient, compact unit. And that's just not a defence, that's just not a goalkeeper on his back line. It's the whole midfield, it's the whole attacking unit, being compressed, being tight, and forcing teams back, being on the front foot at home, um, every chance you get to keep teams up locked in in their half, make it uncomfortable for them, but also know then at the right time, if you've been uh, trying different options, that you're giving the players the ammunition of having the chance to mix it up when they need to, playing short, playing long, whatever the, whatever the opposition. Because you, you always have to remember if a team is being very aggressive against you and wants to be aggressive, you don't want to play into that as well. You have to mix it up. If a team is sitting off you, you have to obviously advance that yourselves and be a bit more um, on the front foot in that sense, in possession. But there's, uh, there's lots of ways to win games. You kind of both said there, though, saying moments, and kind of wrong since you said yesterday, though, having team meetings and kind of cramming information in. Does that information, obviously, in this community, both of you, is that it's not so much even just saying, Packwoods and all the rest of it, but that mentality, you know, what you're speaking of there, putting that message in about how players actually approach and the mentality. Yeah, no, I think, uh, as you say, we've only got a short amount of time to work together and to get our principles and our ideas right for the game. So I think a mentality side of it is very important that, you know, we go into the game with belief that we'll be in the game for long periods of, of the game and that we'll always have a, an opportunity and a chance to, to get something from the game. Yeah, what, has, what has Heinrich really driven into you? In terms, of that, in terms of those principles, what has he been trying to actually get across it? I think he's tried to keep it as simple as, as possible over over the short time we've had together because you know we all come from club sides where we're playing different formations, different styles, and I think to get everyone on the same <coughs> on the same line, going in the same direction, has been the most important thing for him. Thank you very much. Everyone, training starts. What's it? Thank you. <laughs>